Welcome back to another Ben's Day with Batgirl and Ben. Hey, Ben, how are you? This is take two. Hey, welcome to take two. Yeah, I, I use a program called Call Recorder, folks, and right in the middle of this wonderful conversation Ben and I had, it just decided that it was going to shut down an update, which sounds a lot like Windows, and that just doesn't happen on my Mac. Um, Jack with you, Call Recorder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip over all the fun stuff that Ben and I talked about, and I'm going to get right to the gist of it. And we were talking about, and I'm going to ask the question a little bit differently since we okay. got really deep into it. So we started a controversy, which, you know, every time we talk and we answer questions that aren't exactly to people's liking, we start a controversy about the Sabre the last time. You've already answered this question. So the question actually is going to be, um, and now that we know where we were going with this about real life versus the virtual life, What's the difference between stealth and stealthy in the Star Citizen universe? Um, well, in this particular case, I, which is what's important, I mean, yeah. in, to someone in the Star Citizen universe, there's probably no practical difference there. There will be different levels of stealth and you know, so on. Um, in terms of spacecraft design, it's intent. Um, the Sabre is, it's the modern military dogfighter. It's, it's, it's the hot new, uh, new hotness spacecraft. And the idea there is it's, it's, you know, it's our equivalent of the F-22 or the F-35. It's, it's the new thing, and it incorporates, you know, all the advances in stealth that have been made in the 1970s, 1980s. And uh, it does them as part of being a fighter. So it is a fighter that is stealth. Uh, hold on just a moment. But is this recording? Recording? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Now you're making a big deal. God. <laughs> Hey, that's the wife. Let's try that one more time. That was Alexis. It was. Yeah, she's awesome. All right. Well, we were right in the middle of answering a question about people are going to like that Alexis came in. We were right in the middle of answering a question about stealth versus stealthy. So Ben's going to give us his um, his definition of stealth versus stealthy in the Star Citizen universe. Okay. Um, so it has to do with intent. Um, the idea being that the saber is the equivalent, the equivalent of something like the F-35 or the F-22. It's, I said this already, but I don't know if you use that or not. It's, it's the, it is supposed to be a fighter more than anything else. It is a fighter that uses all these advances and stuff that have gotten to this point. Um, and it differs from the Hornet in that respect. When, when they built the Hornet, that was the top of the line spacecraft, but stealth wasn't so big a concern. There, there's the, the Hornet Ghost, which is a, a later upgrade kit, which says, okay, reduce the emissions as best you can, change the silhouette as best you can, you know, don't, don't, don't be such a big target. Um, but that's, you know, that's kind of the idea of, you have this hull and you can take it as stealthy as you can. Whereas the Sabre is something that was designed from the very start to incorporate all these stealth features, the internal missile base, the radar resistant armor, and so on. But at its heart, it's still, a space superiority fighter, and I hate using that term because that comes back to my but a space superiority, the equivalent of an air superiority aircraft. So it would um, be the equivalent of an F-22, not yeah, an so, F-35, not an attack plane, but a, a plane like an interceptor, something that's supposed to be over the battlefield, like an F-14 that's flying cap for the uh, for the uh, aircraft carrier. Yeah, um, think of it like... Uh, it's just, you know, the, the Navy didn't come and say, hey, we want an especially stealthy plane. They said... We want a plane to do this role, um, whereas something like the F-117, stealth fighter, not actually a fighter, uh, the B-2, something like that is designed from the ground up with stealth as the key thing. It's stealth and then everything else. Uh, yeah. And I'll, I'll confess that we have been looking at doing a stealth, you know, stealth, stealth, stealth ship as uh, one of it, It's not one of the ones we have in practice right now. It hasn't been approved, well, gone through design or anything like that. But just the idea, some the Star Citizen equivalent of the B two or the Star Citizen mm. equivalent of the F one seventeen, something that totally invisible gets in and gets out. Um, we've been playing on that. That's very much what's in my head. That's my cool. Stealth fighter. Um, Being I know, that I know we're that. building another one of those stealth bombers now, the B three should be out by twenty twenty five. So that's that's a good thing to do. Yeah, so um, the the intent was never to say that the saber is not stealthy or that it's not a fighter that is stealth it's just not our equivalent of the you know the nighthawk but it's definitely more stealthy than something like the hornet stealth yes, or something yes. like the hornet non-stealth yeah that, that's the idea all right and uh it looks like um lore based 
we have um, this being given to us for the first time before it's actually given to the Navy. Is that still, are we still following that, that specific idea that we're getting it before the Navy? Um, to be honest, I can't remember exactly what the lore is for the Sabre. Yeah, um, I know... The I bid was still hanging out there is what the uh, lore on, what, which I assume you wrote, but with the... No, I, think, I don't think I wrote the lore for the Sabre. Okay. Uh, other than possibly naming it. Uh, let me see. I, I do know we were we wanted to do for the next jump point a Sabre squadron, and Laura came back and said, no, 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 they're, they're all going undergoing transition training right now, so there are no Sabre squadrons. So I guess the military right. is just starting to adopt them. Um, that's, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. So going back, it's like the lore has the Hornet as the mainstay of the UEE um, space craft, starship yes. force, space for the last force. hundred or so years, right? Yeah, which is something odd we always did in Wing Commander. That, and I mean, I guess it's, it's semi-realistic when you don't have a giant space war going on, improving technology quickly. I mean, we've been flying the B-52 in some form or another for... 60 years now yeah. and i think it's gonna last another what, 25 2030. or 30 yeah 2030 yeah um so it's definitely there are definitely real life examples of aircraft starting to be real life examples of aircraft that have been in service that long and the one is supposed to follow those it's it's a peacetime design that was iterated over time um, I'm sure a Hornet today is totally different from whatever Hornets were actually being manufactured and flown 50 60 70 years ago but yeah. uh, Newer engines, better weapons, you know, whatever it is, but they get upgrades over time. Yeah. I, you know, I like I like how this is already touching into the universe with us. And you know, the idea is now now we're at war. We we I mean, you're going to see that in Squadron Forty Two. We're ramping up for giant space war, and technology will continue to start to shift rapidly. I mean, you you go through ten years flying Wildcats, and then suddenly you've got the Hellcat, and the Corsair, the Thunderbolt, and whatever, whatever, as we need to respond to alien threats. So. Um, Okay. So uh, I, I got to ask Yoko Rose's monthly question since it's now March. Female models? They're still coming. Um, They're better. Yeah. She's definitely going to have female models. Um, I wish we had them now. I don't mean to come with character customization. Um, so like 2.12. <laughs> well, well, maybe. Mm -hmm. No, hopefully it won't be for that. But, uh, yeah. No, it's, that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, female character models are, are an implementation rather than a bug fix, so they take longer. You know, they're not. It's some. You know, there's never been a point where we sat around and said, you know, we sit around and we say, we want to have procedural plans. Can we do this? This is a research problem. We want to, uh, you know, we, we need to have physics grids that let you come in and out. Can we do this? How do we do this? Here's eight months of work to figure that out. The female model is, is pure implementation. There's there's no reason it you know there's there's no challenge there. It's we need a, a developer for X number of days to put this in the game. So we we tend to prioritize those things behind just from a development standpoint. Um, but I, I certainly agree that I, I wish we could get them out there sooner. Okay. And now from the Star Citizen Coalition for the Corvette now. <laughs> Are we any closer to hearing anything on Corvette? Uh, Polaris. I'm sorry, Polaris. I know better than to ask that question. I know it's a Polaris. There's a Polaris or the Idris, which are... Well, the, the Idris is not a Corvette. Yeah, not anymore. But I, but no, I can't probably about, say... They're talking about Polaris. Oh, for, uh, well, I'll answer the Idris anyway. I can say we just did our... Multi, we've been multiplayer testing the Idris. It's looking great. Um, oh, yeah, tease us. <laughs> I've got a video I really want to show, and I'm, I'm, I've been, I'm begging Chris right now to let me show it of the... Just the test. I mean, it's, it's a rough test, but you can see how cool it is that you, it's like a level that you fly. Uh, but uh, let's see what else. Uh, so the Polaris, no, Polaris is just going to go to an artist. Uh, right now we're leaning towards smaller, 100, 120 meter Corvette. Um, the uh, Spirit, the Spirit Corvette, Spirit, our Spirit Corvette is the uh, Camerani class uh, right. Matter 3. Because it has such cool gun coverage, you know that, that was the only ship in all of Wing Commander Three, the enemy cap ship, that was actually a threat, um, yeah. just because of how it positioned the guns, the four lasers and the rear turret. Um, it was very, you know, so we were specifically thinking in approaches in this Corvette. You know, how, how do we prevent it from, you know, how do we cover it from all angles? So, um, okay. 
but no, no art yet, no, uh, no design. Um, I, and you know, I, I see those threads in the forum, like voting for the price, and like we were not not close to that at all yet. No, I, I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. And uh, Yoko's second question is just very simply, uh, and I know this one's for Sandy, but she asked it, so I'm going to throw it to you and see if you could influence this. Will we see any other diecast models like the one for the Connie? And can we please have action finger, figures of like Ben in the unit, you know, around the verse? I, you know, you I, and Sandy around the verse action finger, figures. Yes, I, I'm into that. I want around the verse action figures. I'll take a bobblehead. I've got uh, Freddie Prince Jr. here. Oh wow! Look at that. It's his birthday today. How did you so find I, that? They it's made that. Yeah, yeah, uh, do I have time for a strange story? Do the strange story. I'll ask one, two, and Doctor Jeffrey's question. I'll ask three questions then. Okay, I've got time if you do. Uh, I have time. So back in the day, in 1999, for the Wing Commander movie, there was a company, a new toy company called. I don't know if you can see it. It's. Uh, X Toys. Oh, back, which, yeah, there it goes. X Toys, 1999. Okay. It was a very, not a good name for your new toy company during the rise of the internet. Um, you yeah. search for X Toys, you do not get <laughs> interaction figures. You did get them then. Uh, so oh X, X Toys, founded by a guy named Bob Monaco. He went to Toy Fair or Licensing Expo that year and somehow came away with Wing Commander. Wild Wild West, the uh, the Will Smith movie. Gotcha, gotcha. And 1980s Saturday Night Live. What? And they launched these three product lines based on those licenses, um, which, to be generous, were not particularly successful. Um, <laughs> a buddy of mine and I, Joe, Joe Garrity, who runs the Origin Museum in Virginia, we reached out to the guy a couple of years later because they did, uh, I'll show you again on the back, they were going to do Wing Commander vehicles. And they, wow. they showed the prototype, but they never released them. So we reached out to the guy and said, like, oh, did you ever make the prototype? Would you be willing to sell it? And he said, yeah, I'm, I'm coming to Northern Virginia in three weeks. I would be willing to sell this thing. Uh, so Joe and I went and we bought the, the two prototype ships. I've got one in my collection. He's got the other. All right. um, and I said to the guy, like, so what, what are you going to do next with X Toys? How, how do you turn this around? And he was like, oh, I'm really, he, was, he was like a... 50-something man. He was so super excited. He was like, oh, we're really going to turn things around. I've got this. Uh, I'm, I'm actually down here in Virginia because we've got a meeting with this, uh, this skateboarding guy. He's, he's, we're going to license him and make a whole line of little skateboards. Kids are going to love it. Tony and Hawk. I go, oh, is it Tony Hawk? And the guy like looks at me with a death stare. I'm like, Why does everyone keep asking me that? And <laughs> It's the only guy. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think they ever released their skateboards. Um, but wherever you are out there, I hope. Uh, I hope <laughs> life worked out for you in some way. <laughs> God, because um, oh. he was not hip with the teen trends. Moon Commander and Wild Wild West and yeah. Angry Chef from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> there was no question. You were going to tell us a story. <laughs> that was that was cool. Oh, oh no! It was uh, merchandise. Um, yeah, merchandise. <laughs> yes, there there will be some more merchandise. In fact, we were just looking at prototypes of the uh, the smaller Connie models that a lot of the other physical packages got, and from there we can do some other cool stuff. I want like a one forty eight scale model of like my saber, but we could always have those printed. I wish you did things like they did in uh, World World of Warcraft. They have the uh, I don't. I forget what they were, but they were the digital 3D prints that yeah, you would load that. in your character. We're talking. I mean, about that. We're talking come about that. on, that has to happen at some point when the game goes live, because with all the customizations to characters that you do, we're definitely going to have uh, lots of uh, unique-looking people. So we got to get to Ben Davini's question because he's important. He's been a uh, supporter of the show for quite a while. Great he, he said, "Yeah, Ben Davini." <laughs> he said, "I have a friend." <clears throat> I'm supposed to cough, I guess, that isn't much of a pilot. Will it help at all to venture out in a bigger ship, or will the matchmaker just send a bigger guy after us, making things worse than before? Is there any point of having a tougher ship with matchmaker in place? No, no, the, the, goal, the goal will be to match people of equivalent skill. So if, if you are not a big space combat person and it lots a lot you know we, we want to build a game that has 
incredibly detailed, challenge-based space combat, but we also want other people to enjoy this world we're building. So um, you know, certainly the hope is that you will be matched with other players at the same level. You used to do that in Commander. You know, you, if you didn't do a very good job, the AI knew to turn down the heat. Um, and hopefully we can do the same thing with the matchmaker. Um, okay. And yeah, I would say you know certainly a, a good thing for uh, for folks who are not as experienced in space combat would be to you know sign on as an engineer or a gunnery officer or a repair person. Um, we we want to make roles for everybody, not just people who are the best space combat guys in the world. Okay. Um, with the number of ships that you have rolling out. Are we going to start to see some names that match other countries' favorite, you know, famous aircraft like the Spitfire? They go through about 20 different well, ones. It's interesting you say that because I we bring up Spitfire constantly uh, whenever we need a name. It's one of those aircraft designs that everybody kind of feels weird assigning it to anything else. It, you know, um, I think maybe because it's just the word has come to be the Supermarine Spitfire and not not a Angry Lady or whatever the original uh, you, Spitfire you can, you can do it, but you know what you should do? Rename the Gladius to the Typhoon. <laughs> I agree that. I agree with that. The uh, it should be the Typhoon. It came from the British people, you know, from Manchester, and you have a Gladius and a Gladiator, and that's too confusing. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of times the challenge is stuff like... Uh, it's like... It would make sense for any you know space carrier show to have uh, TCS or HMS or whatever Enterprise, right. but you can't get away with it because there's one space Enterprise or five of them or however many. Uh, but yeah, I, we would like to have more international names for ships. Um, this is the first time in the history of the U.S. Navy we don't have an Enterprise right now. Yeah. Uh, 2035, I think, is the next one. It's crazy, but yeah, I I, I can see that. Be out by then. But you know, you could have the victory. Victory would work. Um, but but you see, but you see how you did that. The victory is always a British ship, right? Yeah. Just like I mean, so I mean, I, I I understand what you're saying, but yeah, Enterprise would be a little bit of a stolen piece. But you know, they had the beagle. Well, Chris, they had the yeah. You know. Chris pulled off victory in uh, Wing Commander Three. I mean, I feel like if we did a U.S. Air. U E U E N victory. It would just come off as a Wing Commander nod rather than to yeah. Nelson's flagship. What was what was uh, the one in uh, Wing Commander Four? Midway. Uh, Wing Commander well, Midway was Wing Commander Prophecy. Uh, Wing okay. Commander Four was the Lexington, Lexington for the first hit, and then the Intrepid for the. Uh, All great the carrier names. Yeah. All yeah. great carrier. You just didn't do the Ark Royal though, right? <laughs> there was an Ark. So there have been two Ark Royals in the Wing Commander continuity. Uh, yeah. Through the novel action stations about the start of the Terran Korathi War, there's an Ark Royal there, yeah. and uh, fleet action about the you know, epic battle for Earth that happens between Wing Commander Two and Wing Commander Three. There's an Ark Royal there also. Okay, so this one might be for you. I think this one might be for Tony, though. How do you see the persistent universe rolling out? Do you have a tentative list of features and content? It, well. I'm going to let you a answer this because it says, do you have a tentative list of features and content that when it's in place, you can say, this is the PTU. Is it officially our and everything after that is post-launch content? Out. Like, what's going to be there when it's officially out? Or are we going to, my, my second question to this would be, or are we going to continue along the way that we are now, which is going to be, little minor updates and it evolves into it eventually. Well, we, so two things there. Yes, we do have the vision list. The, here are all the things that we need to have to make the game released, um, which is I, I, probably not a position to share that right now, but it's, it's, you know, you have to have all the careers, mining, exploration, uh, passenger travel, and so on and so on. You have to have all the ships, you have to have uh, you know, X, Y, Z, things we've promised. So we, we, we keep very, very close track of that in Confluence. Uh, you know, here's all the things we've talked about. Here's where they are. Um, and, you know, that, that's just natural. You know, you know, we started the very, very early part of the project was coming up with that list and then doling it out to developers as we go along. You, know, you, you guys are doing mining, and then once that's done, you will do nothing. And that, that's all part of the production process. Um, let's see what I have with that question. Or is it something that we're just going to have 
one day it's just like that last update is out. Now here's a persistent universe. <laughs> yeah, I think we will get to a point where we get to the last thing on our list. We check it off and we say, okay, the game is live now. Um, but I don't think that'll mark the end of the process. We will want to keep introducing features and roles and shifts uh, for as long as we are able so to do. Uh, okay. And I will say that you know the the really great thing about Star Citizen is the crowdfunding lets us take the time to do all this. Um, it means that if in six months Chris comes to comes up with some amazing idea that maybe we didn't have in the roadmap but will truly benefit the game, we can say, okay, we're going to take a little bit extra time on that. I don't expect to have any more of those. You know, now that we have the procedurally generated stuff, I don't expect to have any more eureka moments like that. But it's the freedom to adapt uh, has been just fantastic. Uh, okay. Um, Dirk Gently. These are amazing names. Um, um, he wants to know, currently shields are set to mitigate damage, direct damage or splash damage, but I can't see quite how this works. You explained this before about explosion. Well, actually, Chris did. I can understand how shield protection varies between energy and ballistic types, but how would a shield system determine whether a small piece of metal coming from it was exploding from a missile or a barrel of a gun? Um, well, it, it won't impact. It won't be. It won't imp it's not missile versus gun, it's ballistic versus energy. Right. So, uh, you know, a mass driver cannon that shoots slugs is the same thing as a missile in that sense, whereas right. a laser cannon is the other category. So it's, it's just uh, the dividing line is different from where they're thinking. Okay. And will larger ships be able to layer these types of shields? I will not answer that one because that one is for our... Uh, our shield, the uh, mass driver and company are okay. shielding up as we speak. So I will... Uh, Leave that one for them. All right. And uh, Dr. Jeffrey wanted to know, um, where does the Corvette, the Polaris, what will its main mission be when it finally comes out? Um, I mean, I think it's our equivalent of like a PT boat. Um, oh. I mean, that, that's kind of what the role of a Corvette in any universe is. Uh, as far as the military using it, you say, okay, we have 7,000 jump points in the universe. We have five carrier task force groups. So we have 600 Corvettes that patrol the rest of them. Um, it's disposable cap ship, I guess, in that sense. Um, for players, the idea is they can take them in any direction they want. It can be their small corporate headquarters. It can be their guild base. It can be for protectively shipping things from place to place. Um, okay. So it's, it's another one where I have to think about how players are using it versus how it works in the lore of the universe. Why did the UEE build it in the first place? All right, and then uh, this has to be the last one. Can Ben give us some? Um, this is from Goy, G O E E I. I don't know how to pronounce that. Can Ben oh. give us some more detail? What? What'd you say? Is it Goy, maybe? We'll see. Um, I think this might be a Sandy one. Um, do, you, do you have more detailed information about events that we'll be having in Gamescom? Not yet. Um, it's, I, I got a bunch of PMs from folks who want to know specifically what we're doing. We don't have the details yet. There will be four, I think, back offsite backer events throughout right. the week. Um, so hopefully and, to catch everybody who might be coming to the show at any time. And um, possibly something from Chris at some point, possibly not. Oh, so yeah, let me talk about this a little bit. Because um, people are saying, oh, you cancel games, come, you're not doing the, the big party. We're not doing the big party because we don't want to, you know, tilt the team in any way to doing a demo for that. The plan is instead to show off wherever we are at that point. Um, I am 100, 110, whatever percent sure there's going to be some really cool stuff, but uh, not, we're just going to present it a little bit differently. So we didn't want okay. to say, you know, when you've spent the thousands of thousands of dollars to rent the venue and set up everything and set the stage and so on, you need to have something decidedly ready. You need people dedicated to building that. And we'd rather those people work on Squadron 42, work on the iterative Star Citizen patches. But, um, you know, we, we're already getting to a point where, like, the procedural guys are coming up with stuff, and Chris is like, that's so much better than I thought. Let's show that at Gamescom. So uh, okay. expect plenty of news, just not the not the keynote presentation. But we'll still have the 
backer events, so you don't have to be, you don't have to sign up for the show or anything. We'll have offsite backer events. You know, we'll do the beer garden stuff like that. So the t- and you'll we'll all be there. I'll be there. Uh, my whole team will be there. Um, and the, so there'll be the social stuff, and there will be announcements, and we'll be showing stuff off, and we have some other surprises in store for what we're doing on the show floor. Also, all right, that is awesome. And it's this is my question. Just answer it soon or not soon. Don't get deep into it unless you want to. Bengal Carrier, are we going to see any of the interior shots soon? Hmm. I. They've been working on it for quite some time, and they did a whole rework of it, right? So there's two answers to that question. One is, if if you could, if you know, if I could invite you into my copy of Shotgun, you'll yeah. be seeing Bengal Carrier images every day. Uh, okay. Problem is, it's it's all squadron stuff, and we're oh, I don't want to see squadron stuff. under wraps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so the answer is yes. There's a lot of extra work, and uh, wait, wait, just wait for uh, Chris to. Let us show it, really. That, that, that's good. Oh, I, I could wait for that. I'd rather be able to walk around the Idris with you than that. Ben, thank you. You uh, Next major release is 2.3, and that's probably a month away? Hopefully, yeah. Okay. Fingers crossed. We, we want to do with this case where we do a publish every month. Sometimes we're okay. going to miss it. I mean, probably more often than not, we're going to miss it. But uh, it's it's all in the service of making a better game. I'd rather be a couple of days late than publish. to fly that car, too. <laughs> it's coming. Um, yeah. We are also looking at a two two one patch, uh, which may go to the PTU any yeah. moment now, possibly tonight, possibly a week from now. Okay. Um, but uh, we pick some of <laughs> tonight them. or a week from now. That's good. Yeah, and the checks in the mail. <laughs> no, t- tonight is our first attempt. It's going to be our first testing this thing. Is it good enough to go out? And sometimes okay. we get that on the first try. Sometimes it takes ten tries. All right, that's fine. All right, and uh, we're going to end it here, but I, I just want to make everybody aware. One of the members of the Star Citizen team, David Lademan, has a Kickstarter going on right now. It is for a board game, yes, a board game, where you get to sit next to your friends and family and actually interact live. The board game he created was uh, released originally in 1982 by Steve Jackson Games, and all he's looking for is 50000 so he can get those of us that pledged for it a copy of it. So up there in the corner somewhere will be the interview I did with David. Over there somewhere will be a link to the uh, site where you can go and pledge. Folks, please just take a look at it. David is a creator of most of the printed material, if not all of it, for the game right now, including Jump Point and the brochures that we were so wonderful you know wonderfully given at different points so take an opportunity to look at it ben are you a fan of uh, board games yes let, let me plug this also because okay. um david was kind enough to let me uh demo uh star traders with him a couple months ago when we were in austin uh we stayed late at the office and played star traders in the night it's it's a whole lot of fun um it's 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 certainly a game you could enjoy with your whole family, or you can wrap up the difficulty. It's almost like a video game. You can wrap up the difficulty and play it with, uh, you know, hardcore gamers. Um, it's a great game. It's full of this gentle, referential sci-fi humor, and just it's neat. And David and Ryan are they're some of the best people I know. They are like absolutely good-hearted, good-souled people, and their their dream is just such a small kind thing i i truly want to see them succeed check it out um you know uh D- david started origin way back in 1991 he worked on the documentation for every wing commander and he was part of that original you know that origin spirit that drew me into game development in the first place um you know back back in the late 80s early 90s or there was all this crossover between steve jackson games and origin they would take pen and paper designers who would come over and design you know, Wing Commander and Omega and uh, Space Rogue and all this stuff. And uh, it just, it's a great symbol of what I love about all this. Um, I really, really hope they make it. Um, so. Yeah, and it's just a tiny bit more expensive, $5 more expect- expensive than your average starter package. Mm-hmm. So instead of $45, it's $50. And after talking to David twice about it and interviewing him last night, and being on the Kickstarter, watching all the videos that are out there, I am excited about this game. So I hope that he gets enough. And let's put it this way, folks. We have a million of us out there. I'm sure there's a thousand 
people amongst the million backers for this this game that can put up fifty dollars for this game. So that's what I'm hoping for. All right, Ben. Anything else you want to say? Or nope, let's that's cut good. him loose. All right, we will talk to you next week if we can. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I'll talk to you soon.